Okay, back with another video. Oh boy, old cars, it's always something, right? That's the oldest saying, and it'll always be the oldest saying. All right, so I'm in my 1980 Buick Regal, having a drive here before I put it away for another year, and heard a terrible stripping type of a, a grinding plastic noise. Only then to look under my driver power seat and find that my power seat transmission case, I guess for lack of a better word, was exploded and laying all over the floor. What the heck's going on with that? Now, I'd seen this before with these older tracks, mostly migrating in the different yards and noticed a crack or maybe a warpage here and there, but never really thought much of it because there are two styles, and I'll go into that. But in this, uh, in this setting, at the business end, if you will, is a big uh, overdone motor, and it uh, just connects to this case or it's uh, screw down to that transmission body to task the different uh, six-way features for, you know, both driver or passenger seat in all our cars. And what simply happened is over almost, what, 50 year going on 50 years, the, the petroleum or whatever, similar to maybe a bumper filler thought, just dries up and the thing turns into peanut brittle, best analogy I can think of, and um, that's the end of it. And I later would find that after I got it out, it was just remarkable that it had gone as long as it did. So I am suppose I'm going to have to do that to both sides. So out it comes and unbolt the track off the, the seat frame. And, you know, these are my opinion here, and everybody's got an opinion, right? Like the old saying goes, and I won't uh, elaborate on that with the a-hole remark, but there you, there, there you go. Uh, this is a very stout, rather rigid frame in this seat. And what's neat here is all the attention given to detail back in this era. And uh, we're looking at covers, for example, to cover the tracks when you open the door. So there's a little nicer, what, aesthetic appeal, if you will. And that's all cinched down by the mounting bolts, and there are four of them. And the rest are plastic push pins. You get the guards off, you take the four bolts out, and voila, that, uh, that's what you get. So purpose that part over on the bench, and then now we can really see what's going on here in its totality with uh, the problem before me. I mean, look, at I, you can't fix this. It's, you're no way. You're done. And you'll see later why. And here's that part of the case that exploded right at that motor business end, if you will. And yeah, you, you just, you know, the stuff just is like peanut brittle and it's just crumbling apart. So there's no way you're going to epoxy it or, or any of that stuff. Now, you know, for the feature, when you enable a feature, you just reverse polarity, you know. So three features become six, forward and back and back and forward and whatever. Up and down in the back, up and down in the front. And to do that are a bunker of uh, very heavy-duty solenoids. And then on the other side will call up and suck in, similar to a PTO on a riding lawnmower, that gear to purpose that uh, output both sides because one cable is going to push what? The outer track and then the other, the inner track for whatever the feature is that's called up to, to purpose that track. And sure, you know, we'll embellish all those gears with the good Lucas uh, grease and red and tacky or whatever you guys like to... Uh, to ice the cake when that uh, when that comes and yeah there's those three screws that just kind of cinch that boy that motor's heavy really stout really heavy uh motor up to that uh to that transmission case now i did some research and looked around on the web and lo and behold others of course you know god there were millions of these weren't there have uh, or have had the same problem there's that coupling again that uh, kind of acts as like a shear pin on a snowblower. If things jam up, it compromises and it won't let the case explode. Because, man, I'll tell you what, that motor's a torque-busting fool. Anyway, um, and doing some more reading, got on eBay and found um, that you can get these cases. They're, they're, somebody took a 3D printer or whatever it is, you know, and I don't know anything about any of that. I never even had a fax machine. And, and was able to copy it, and then don't you? You know, you read about it, and then you want to find out more. And then one option I had thought about is to go back into the set, what I would call the second generation, where there was later redundancy, um, no solenoids 
purpose three motors reverse their polarity also very stout very nice build and you could just pop this track in and replace the older track in lieu of uh, having to mess with the case and staying with the uh, with the earlier design those were very modular and for the most part would work but the thing here is is that and that could be worked around the footprint was different to mount it to the floor and you know i mean i like original stuff i'm an originality type of a guy and yeah three cables both right and left side you know purpose uh, what three features and they're then called six-way seats i call them eight-way seats and those of you who've looked at my other videos where I convert manual seat tracks over to power seat tracks know what that remark uh, what that remark means. So here are those very stout, very nicely, heavily built tracks, and uh, their jack supports and jack frames, you know, to push the back up or the front. And then there's a relay that you're going to energize. That's also going to be exciting that motor when you do call up a particular solenoid and it'll purpose that solenoid and anyway it's kind of busy you know in this in this older setting and there is some appeal i must say with the uh, track that you just finished looking at with the uh, all this being omitted and and you know getting right down to brass tacks and the business side of things with three motors so yeah with all these holes and jack holes and screws now is a good time to, to police up these tracks and get them cleaned up and and just embellish them in uh, in lubricant and the same with these gears i'm going to going to use a synthetic grease here and here's that uh, i'll introduce that motor case now i got a couple of these because i know the other side's going to go because i read about it got underneath there yeah he's got some personality too but it works fine so i'll leave it alone until it blows up and you know just common sense and the real, you know, the reality here, what, we'll use the driver's side 10 times for one time on the passenger side. I don't often even have passengers. So I didn't really find any kind of a problem, but I did have to kind of whole hog these, uh, these outlet holes where the uh, cables will abut to the, to the body there and bolt up, if you will because they were just a little bit tight. Now, a lot of people were complaining about that. I didn't have a problem. You know, you just open them up a little bit. Yeah, they, 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 they were in want. You'd have to really force the shaft in there to get them through the hole. So you hog them out a little bit and hone them out with a file. It's kind of fun, actually. And that's what I had to end up doing here. All right, then that thrust plate goes in. And you'll see one side of the business end again, that uh, phrase. And all the gears nicely embellished in the grease. And then these solenoids, you just pop them out and transfer them over and pop them in. And there's a stop or a, a bearing kind of a, I don't know, like a lead boss there or a die cast boss for the gears to land and plant on so they won't erode the case, I should suppose. And grease it up well and kind of do an assembly here and get everything all kind of back together. And yeah, even the way the motor mounted on this thing, the whole carrier was warping. So then when everything wants to fall back into place and you'll carefully align those uh, output shafts with the case and you uh, put the case back together, what I found is it, just like a kind of a stiff centipede. It didn't really want to move at first when you cinch these cables up. And one's inclination is to just put all the bolts back in the casing. I found that spring and I thought, where in the hell is that going? I think it's just under over the years it landed under there. It looks like an alternator brush spring holder. I don't think it's going to have any purpose here, but it was interesting to find it under there. And when you get all this done, and you tighten all those bolts up, and you'll notice that only a couple are in there. It just seems stiff. And what I learned to do was something that I learned way back in the beginning, being in the business, what, almost 50 years. If you just preliminarily put it together, and you give it a little tap, and uh, you can run, run it doing this or whatever you'd like, you kind of bet it in. 
it just kind of nests itself in. So leaving the case loose and just giving it a general tap all around, even on the motor case, just kind of sets about a happy place where it likes to be. And when you find that happy place, you just kind of cinch everything down. You don't have to go crazy here and tighten it down. So yeah, just like, a, just like I'm showing you. When it's running and you hear it and listen to it talking to you, if you will, and you, and you kind of just gently tap it here and there. Oh, I like that. And then it, a little quicker, a little quicker. And then before you know it, now you're really singing. And then, you know, from the middle out, maybe tweak them down a little bit, all those screws. Anyway, the case seemed much happier in my having done that. So won't we then? We'll, we'll take those cables and we'll pop them out and, and grease them, oil them, whatever your liking is. And... Uh, get the tracks cleaned up as I prefaced earlier and then we'll do a simple reassembly. Now here's a good thing where a cell phone would be would be welcomed and take a picture along the way. Which side did the blue ones come out? What uh, what did I move? What did I not move? Which way was this before? Which way was that motor bracket facing? And, and so on and so on. And that's where a phone becomes a, a nice tool. And then don't we? We want to be symmetrical. You got to stay in sync. So when you're running it up and down and back and forth, when we land it all back together, everybody's got to be a perfect harmony. You know that. I mean, for back and forward, for up and down, be it front or rear. And then we'll get it back and mount it on this uh, rather, again, very nicely made stout frame. And look at it. I'm a big guy. I'm pretty impressed. It didn't strip out or anything. And get that, uh, get that stout baby all back in there. And yeah, boy, you feel the iron. It's heavy. It's heavy. And these were nice builds. And then the, what, the older guys back in these days, you call that nice? I'll show you nice. And you get a 50s car and, and you know, my God, those are made, those gears are made out of iron. <laughs> Plastic piece of shit, you know, they, so those guys would look at this. Anyway, everything in its evolution, the point of the remark being. So it, uh, it is kind of comical. So, you know, having said that, then back we'll go with this newer case. And in some sense of finality, looking at what we had and we, what we were dealing with, you'll see here, maybe you'll look perhaps one day under your car when you're at the wash backing it out and wonder, what the hell is he talking about? Well, look, I mean, man, that's something. And that's what you're going to run into. And it's, again, uh, like a bumper filler example. You, you have to do it. There's no way out. And it's going to be a must. And what it happens, fret not, worry not, because it's a, it's a workable problem. There is an answer. And one that I'm kind of outlining here for all of you that may run into this. And I see there's already a couple of nice videos with that with that uh, remark in there. And a how-to, uh, you know, um, and that's always appreciated. So uh, theirs are probably more finite, and you'll have a better look at, uh, at that kind of action if you'd like and yeah we talked about those covers so these are going to be ready to go back in and get us a seat back and um yeah i, I really liked it i i got these cases i bought a pair of them uh this was a uh uh i think it was in the 40s or best offer anyway i think i got them for about 35 37 dollars each for each case times two and got it back in, and man, just, you know, perfect. It uh, runs nicely, and you know, when the car's running and it's in the shop and it's cold, you what, pick up two more volts with the elevator going, so then they really buzz. But you know, let's call it what it is. And when we get a seat where we like it, it's there, we leave it there, it sets there, but uh, it just needs to work. And you know, once in a while, you wanna move that seat, so surprise, 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 and that was my experience. So it came, we got it, and now I can go back and uh, when I'm on a country road and sound my railroad horn with this car with its, I love its loud horns, and, and uh, go and get my ice cream cone in the spring and everything will be great again. All right, hope this helped you out. I'm Tom Z.